I need a taxi cab. This is Miss Ewer. You have my address on file. Uh, the driver must be able to speak English. He must also know his way around the city. It is not my job to instruct him. Is that clear? I'll need him in half an hour. Exactly half an hour. That's terrific. What are you going to do all day? I can help you. Yeah, can you read a map? No. Can you add up my mileage? No. Can you change a tire? No offense, Bobby, but I think quitting school in second grade is a little premature. I hate school. Give it a chance, okay, buddy? My mom quit when she was 15. Yeah, well. She gets lots of jobs. Yeah, she gets a new one every two weeks. And she's pretty. Uh-huh. Isn't she? Bobby, I am not going to date your mother, all right? Why? Is that dumb Sandy? Yeah, because of Sandy and because, well, your mom and I, let's just say we have different agendas. What's an agenda? Ask your teacher. Dispatch to Unit 22. Mike, you there? Can you hear me, Sandy? Yeah, he's up at 24 North Monroe, immediately. Got it, immediately. Fifteen minutes late. Sorry. The door! Oh. Oh. Big train taxi drivers nowadays. I said, this is a great day. Back here at one o'clock. One o'clock. Keep the change. Touches this handle, it breaks off, just disintegrates. Well, at least the door's still on. And I should have stayed in bed this morning, but no. I wake up, I go downstairs to pick up the kid. He's sitting there with this I hate life face plastered on him. Of course, Lisa's nowhere to be found. And then I am blessed with the fare from hell. Oh, sorry, you fit all her specifications. Lucky me. Sandy, you're gonna see this woman. I mean, she's got the pearls, the gloves, the little bag. She will not stop yammering. I mean, my cab's too dusty, the window won't stop rattling. And you know what? She's right. Do you want me to send someone else after her? 
Nah, she's a great tipper. You send me a couple dozen like her every month, I'll have my own cab in no time. Well, if you're hungry after you and the guys go bowling, I am making spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti, huh? Hey, I promise not to burn it this time. Mm -hmm. You interested? What do you think? Seven o'clock. Ah. Ah, all right, I'm gonna fix this door. She seemed to be fine when we were playing bridge on Tuesday. Poor Sarah. <laughs> all those early bird specials, all that scrimping and saving. Over a million dollars in stocks and bonds squirreled away. What good did it do her? Well, like my mother used to say, you'll never see a shroud with pockets. She was probably being cautious about her future. About what? Her future. She was 78 years old, Catherine. She didn't have a future. And she probably opted for safety. She didn't have an adventurous bone in her body. She wasn't living, she was breathing. Are you all right, dear? Fine. I could drive you home. N no, no thank you. I, uh, uh, I have errands to do. Uh, listen, if you need a little more time, uh, I can drive around the block. Maybe the sea. Excuse me? Oh, it's been so long since I... Are you sure you're all right, lady? I'm all right. I believe I'd like to go to Malibu. What, are you kidding me? Pasadena to Malibu? That's a $60 ride. Are you afraid this rattle trap of yours won't make it? over there. Oh, I I'm going to the market uh -huh. for sunblock. Yeah, well, there's no sun. That's when you burn. Lady, you've worked up a $65 fare. Do you really hey, think that I... Hey, you disappear on me, I'll owe the company. You see, Mr. Donahue, I trust you. I always trust a gentleman. What are you doing here? Where's Mike? My social worker said when mom can't get me, Mike's the designated driver. I'm on the list, you know that. Where is he? Malibu. He went to the beach? He's working. Come on, I signed you out. We'll wait at Mike's place. For what? For your mother. Let's go. Okay. If you had grandparents, I wouldn't be in such a bind. I mean, family, parents, they kind of pick up the slack, huh? Yeah, they do. <sighs> Sometimes I wish I still had mine. <laughs> no freebie sitters for me. <laughs> well, what about Mike? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's cool. <laughs> cool. He's been looking after Bobby ever since you guys moved in. What do you think he is, your personal nanny? No, he's more of a chauffeur, actually. <laughs> you know, always taking Bobby to school and stuff. Besides, they have fun together. Bobby would rather spend time with you than have fun with his neighbor. Since when is motherhood a part-time job? He misses you, don't you get it? What are you yelling at her for? Um, she's just mad because Mike's busy. So, do I look too awful? 
Nah. You look like you have an agenda. <laughs> Come here, you. Oh. Don't forget your sweater. Oh, you are the sweetest guy. You really are. Okay. See ya. That sound, it always reminds me of Charles. Charles. He, he was my fiance. You're engaged? Oh, don't be silly. That was a long time ago. He was a pilot. He used to say that the most glorious thing was to fly with the sun. And we used to walk along the shore waiting to hear that sound. Hear what sound? The sound of the sun touching the sea. You're not a romantic, are you? Nope. What a pity. You coming? I don't eat fast food. No kidding. Full chicken dinner and a large chocolate shake. Give me that. No wonder you're out of sorts. You can't possibly digest properly if you insist upon eating that cholesterol smorgasbord. What's this for? A cup of tea with lemon, please. Knock yourself out. What was that? I said one tea coming up. Hello. May I have a hot tea? Here you are, Your Highness. Live it up. This isn't lemon. This is chemicals. I asked for lemon. Let me see that. See, it says from concentrate, not chemicals. Lemon concentrate. This is the 90s, lady. This is what lemon looks like today, all right? Well, let's get back to Pasadena. I don't want to go back to Pasadena. Fine, I will take you wherever you want to go. You just name it. Santa Barbara. What? Santa Barbara. That's a two-hour drive, lady. Let, let's talk this over rationally, OK? I'm tired of being rational. I've spent my whole life being rational. Just drive. Let's go over here. Oh, isn't it lovely? Yeah, right. What time do you want me to pick you up tomorrow? 11.30. 11.30? Mr. Donahue, do you have a problem with your hearing? You seem to repeat everything I say. 11.30, half the day will be gone. I, th I thought you wanted to poke around tomorrow. 
poke around, yeah. explore. We leave right after brunch. Brunch? Whatever happened to good old-fashioned breakfast? I mean, don't ladies of leisure like to dunk donuts at dawn? Maybe a stack of flapjacks, a side of bacon? You seem to be an authority on hearty breakfast, Mr. Donahue. Listen, lady, uh, this isn't some kind of con, is it? I mean, you're not gonna stiff me for this fair, are you? This should take care of a room and your flapjacks. around here somewhere, why? Oh, I don't know. It sounds romantic, Santa Barbara, moonlit night. We ought to do that sometime, get away. Instead of bowling? <laughs> Miss High and Mighty, I swear. She's probably gotta have first row tickets at the opera or something. You sound upset. <sighs> yeah, I'm upset. She ruined our evening. Well, it's just one night. She thinks she can order me around. And you know why? Because she's got too much time and too much money, and the rest of us peons, we're just here to serve her. Why are you so angry? It's your job. My job? Mike, you're going to have your own cab one day. Soon. Soon's been coming for a long time, Sandy. I knew Lisa would do this to you. She'll show up eventually, but the kid, I don't know. I should have been there for him. <sighs> Listen, uh, Sandy, I really want you to do me a favor, OK? If Lisa doesn't show. Yeah, don't worry. I won't leave him. Thanks. sure in case uh, does she have a friend uh, someone I could call nothing's happened to her it's 6 a.m. she's having fun is all I didn't invite you to come over my mom and me we know how to take care of ourselves well, what do you want for breakfast you want some toast waffles you sure? Uh-huh, the thick kind. Actually, I've never made waffles before. Or easy. Doesn't take a brain to cook. <sighs> Yoo-hoo! Mr. Donahue! My receipts here. This is uh, deodorant, dinner, change of underwear. I don't need the details. What's this? Lunch. We'll be picnicking under a tree looking at the view. Good. Listen, uh, Mrs. Uh... Miss. Miss Dior. When are we going home? Stop dawdling. Mr. Donahue, you're wasting precious time. Believe me, Sandy, when I look at this woman, she's, she's living in a, in a fantasy world. My nerves are shot. Uh, 
See, now that looks great on you. You are a hat person. <laughs> Do you approve, Mr. Donahue? Oh, yeah, fine, take it. It'll match your new teapot. Two antique stores, a shoe place, and a dress shop. Let me ask you something. Who are you dolling yourself up for, huh? I wish I could wear hats. I always look so dumb in them. Posture first, the head held high, and the hat merely tops everything off. That's what Grace used to say. Who? Grace Kelly, the movie star. Oh. I used to model with her in New York. Oh. Grace? Princess Grace of Monaco. We were very close. Mm, yeah, right. You hung out with the princess and I raced cars at Le Mans. That doesn't surprise me. It's the way you drive. Ha, uh ha, -huh. ha. Of course, Grace wasn't a princess when we first met. Ooh, tell me about it. We roomed together at the Barbizon Hotel for Girls in New York City. You don't say. Right. The Barbizon Hotel. She was an aspiring actress, and I was a model. Fascinating. Number 52, Birdsong Lane. Well, let's go, Mr. Donahue. All right. Miss your. House for your new teapot. Here, watch your step. Hello. Hi, Amy Broker Thurman. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Hello. Uh, these homes are priceless. Now, you don't see this kind of charm and attention to detail in the new ones, right? Hold. Oh, did you see the price on this little fixer upper? Shh. Through here. Well, as you can see, uh, you're within walking distance to the beach. Sounds like you can walk to the freeway, too. Uh, now, let's see. This one on the market Sunday. And I already have um, several couples interested. Uh, uh, however, uh, thanks. Can I be frank? Uh, of course. Thank you. I, I, I would love to see a woman with your sensibility in here. Now, this place deserves a woman with flair. I think about it. Think about it. What the hell's there to think about? You got a mansion in Pasadena. What do you want to think about buying this trap for? I have no intention of buying a house. I just want to look around. It's a hobby of mine. So you just wasted this poor sucker's time. It was an open house. Well, it didn't say open to the rich and the poor. You lack imagination. Well, at least I'm not a phony. All I needed was a little time to see what it would be like in a cottage by a stream. And if you can't dream, you die. And obviously, daydreaming does not meet with your approval. I don't need your help. Hey, you know what? I got an idea. Why don't we drive down south to Ventura? You know, they have a wharf there. You can sip the tea and uh, watch the seagulls. What do you say? North. What? Oh, for heaven's sake, pay attention. We're going to see a piece of heaven. Listen, lady. Charles. Yeah, I know. Your fiancé, pilot, and lousy poet. He used to say that Carmel was a piece of heaven. Carmel? Mm-hmm. Wait a second, lady, listen. What do you say I just drop you off at the nearest train station? You, you get a first-class ticket on the Starlight Express, huh? They got an upstairs dining car. It's really, it's first-class all the way. You can sip your tea. It's just like the olden days, you know? Genteel. Trains make me nauseous. Fine. Uh, you know what? A first-class lady like you should be in a limousine with a driver and a uniform the whole bit. You don't belong in a broken-down cab like this. It's grown on me.
going to picnic here. What's wrong with it? It's unsavory. Just keep on driving. Just drive? Lady, I have been driving for three hours while you have been rattling on nonstop, okay? Charles this, Charles that, all his medals, his fancy ballroom dancing, your Tiffany engagement ring. Oh, yeah, let's not forget Grace. Well, where are they now, huh? Where are those glory days now? I'll tell you where. They're gone. People don't live like that now. What right do you have to belittle my memories? Who do you think you are? I'm nobody. I'm just a cab driver. But at least I've got a life. Maybe not a fancy one like yours, no garden parties, just bowling every Monday night, followed by overcooked spaghetti. Weekends, weekends I'll toss around a football with a kid downstairs, maybe, maybe taking a movie with my, my friend. Look, you want a personal companion, that's fine. Hire somebody, it's not my job. Well, just leave me here, go on. You obviously think I'm a very trivial and boring person. Believe me, anybody in their right mind would do that, but me, I start a job, I finish it, you understand? I don't just abandon people. I don't leave them stranded ever. It's just, it's just not in me. Unsatisfactory in homeroom? How'd you manage that? Are you gonna sign it? I'm not authorized to. You're on the dumb list. Well, that list only gives me permission to pick you up from school, not sign your report card. I'll bring it in by Friday. Your mom. She's not here. She's never here. Give it to me. Sign it myself. Part. It's your. Well, we finally agree on something. You think I like driving this piece of junk? You think I haven't complained? My boss doesn't give a damn. He doesn't have to ride in the thing. Yeah, well, there's coming a day when I own my own cab. Master of your own destiny. That's right. You can use these. Yeah, what am I supposed to do with this? To fix the belt. I saw it on a cable show. Oh, you saw it on a cable show? Mm -hmm. There's no way this is gonna work. Well, at least try. Contact. Check. Mr. Bright and early, every election. Bravo. I don't get you, Miss Ewell. You're full of surprises. Starting over. The meter hits a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? I better put this over. There's no reason to shock the nervous system. <laughs> Buckle up.
Here you go. Come on, Bobby. We're gonna be late for school. Where's Pismo Beach? No, let me see. must mean a great deal to you. Who? Oh. oh, the woman you're always telephoning. Sandy? Uh, she, she's a dispatcher at work. But uh, we see each other. She's your girlfriend? Uh, I, mean, I guess you could say that. You know, I've been meaning to ask you. I mean, it's none of my business, but I, I was wondering how come you never married him? Charles, I mean. His last mission, Korea. His plane was never found. I shouldn't have brought it up. It's my mistake. The mistake was in waiting. I'm sorry. I've always been much too cautious in my life. But from now on, I intend to live my life to the fullest, Mr. Donahue. Mike. Uh, Mr. Donahue, it sounds like uh, a suit and tie or something. I'm just Mike, okay? Then you're gonna have to call me Catherine. Oh, that's a deal, Catherine. My pleasure, Mike. What's that for? Well, we can mark all the towns that Mike and his passengers stop in. Hey, you! <laughs> Come on, get yourself. Long dinner. Huh? I thought you were stepping out for dinner. Uh, you said you'd watch them. Hey, you. Look at cool. <laughs> well, aren't you handsome? Where were you? Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> Actually, no, I, I don't. My mom knows how to take care of herself. <laughs> Next time, call, OK? OK. Hey, if you need anything, I'll be camping out here while Mike's on the road. Uh, he told you to look in on us, huh? He's concerned. Well, uh, thanks for, you know. What's his name? Red. <laughs> He's a truck driver. He owns his own rig. Oh, thanks. Mom? Mm-hmm? Does he like children? Um, yeah, sure, I guess. So, could I meet him? How can you meet someone who's probably gone? <sighs> Hello? <laughs> hey! <laughs> How are you? No, nothing, no. Huh? All right, thank you. Oh. Hey. There you go. Huh? 
Dale. Ta-da! That's a lemon. A lemon? Oh, this is a, a lemon. A fresh lemon, and that's what you should have put in my tea Let's before. See, but you slice it first. Yeah, I never seen one. See, these are the old-fashioned oh. kind. Let's sit over here. Oh, I'm hungry. No knives and forks. Thank you very much. Don't make a fuss. I'm fine. Oh, thank goodness you got it. Oh, Catherine, you gotta get the knee looked at. I'm taking you to the hospital. You're taking me to a department store. We're not gonna wander around San Francisco like a pair of bohemians. Wait. All right. You sure you're all right? I have a table by the bar. Oh, that won't do. But, madam. I want a nice table immediately. Madam? I promised my friend a wonderful evening. He's a hero, you know. The only table I have is for a party of four. Don't fight it, pal. Ooh. Man, I should have weighed it down. How's that knee? Splendid. Uh, I never should have let you buy me this suit. You saved my life. Oh, come on. You were magnificent. Uh, those pictures? Yes? You and the princess? You were quite a pair. Real knockouts. I take it that's a compliment. I thought you were making up stories at first about that glamour girl past, but I was wrong. You are the real thing. Mm. Champagne is meant to be sipped. <sighs> be careful. You might go to your head, Mr. Donahue. Right. I thought we agreed on Mike. A gentleman in a suit and a tie is always a mister. Mr. Donahue. Yeah, well, Mr. Donahue is going to get you a bouquet. Oh. Hey. Miss. Hello? 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 Oh, thank you. Can you hear me? Who's this? Well, who's this? I need something classy. My date's got style. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. No, I've, I've never been a waitress. Well, you can make good tips. My mom will train you. When you and Mike get home, she'll teach you how to balance six plates of food at once. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any children? No, I don't. Um, always wanted, but, well, I'm really quite alone. It's Bobby. Oh? Huh? Hello? Mom's still home, and guess what? She didn't even go out tonight. Oh. 
So how are you and Sandy getting along? Listen to me, Bobby. I want you to ease up on her, okay? Why? Because she means a lot to me, that's why. Sure. Soon. <sighs> Bobby says you're his best friend. You seem to mean a great deal to him. He's a good kid. He's had it tough, though, you know. Uh, tell me about yourself. Where did you come from? Back east. Are your parents still there? Well, uh, I wouldn't know. Uh, I mean, last time I saw my mom, I was, what, uh, 10? My old man, he left before I was six. Yeah, I was in and out of maybe a dozen foster homes. Mm. I'm asked why the kid gets to me so much, you know? I hope there's a place for them in your future. Who? Sandy and Bobby. I'm talking about commitment. What, are you worried about me? Concerned, not worried. You're a man of great potential. <laughs> <laughs> to life. The bitter and the sweet. And this is for you. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Catherine, I gotta thank you. I, mean, I don't hang out in the kind of places you do. I mean, you're used to three-inch steaks, French champagne. I won't. Listen, tonight, I won't ever forget it. Splendid. Yeah. And you were splendid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All except one thing. Hasta luego, Mr. Donahue. <laughs> Hasta mañana. Thank you. Good night. She went to lunch. No, she doesn't eat lunch. She's a brunch person. It's noon. It's past brunch. Something is wrong. Try her door. I did. Twice. I can call her again. No! Our policy. Look, I don't care what your policy is. Either you send somebody up there to open that door, or I'm going to kick it in. The security? Catherine! Catherine! Catherine. It was checkout time. I was taking a nap. You were supposed to meet me at 11.30. I thought something had happened. All those pills. Pills? What pills? Last night you were taken. For my angina. How was I supposed to know? Do you have any idea what it feels like to wake up and find two burly men hovering over your bed? No, and I'm not burly. <laughs> not yet. But you're surly. I love this song. How come you're happy today? I'm always happy. Oh, huh, how come? Well, maybe I got a phone call from somebody sweet. Fred? And maybe this someone's on his way to L.A. Is that why you're doing your hair?
car is going away again. Mom? No, 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 no. I don't pick up hitchhikers. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Now, stop the car. Washington State is the home of serial killers. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. She's a young girl. She has no business being out on the road hitchhiking. And, of course, that's our problem. Come on, come on. Hey! Pasadena. Cool. Where are you going? Seattle. Oh, we're passing through there. Aren't we, Mike? Hop in. I'm gonna wake up in a minute, and none of this will have happened. Jet. It's kind of French, like chate. Jet short for that. <laughs> You're French. Do you have friends in Seattle? I like living on the edge, going from place where no one knows me. I hate to be bored. I'd rather just sleep on the streets. Why does he always eat so much? <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> Neat. You've got, like, the hugest appetite. She's just recycling. <laughs> I'm having the greatest time. Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? Just checking. Well, ladies don't rummage through other people's knapsacks. Give me your cell phone. Why? We have a problem. Where is she? I'm making a phone call. Oh, man, you gotta close the phone to turn it off. Her name is Susan, Susan Gerard, from Fords Prairie, Washington. Uh, Lydia told me that it's just a small community with a little more than 2,000 people. Who's Lydia? Her mother. I promised her that we'd get her daughter home safe and sound. I just talked to her on the telephone. She's only 14 years of age. There's no way you're gonna talk sense to a 14-year-old girl. I know that. Well, okay, so what did she run away for? What she wanted to tattoo. Her father hit the ceiling, she took off, and she was just making a statement. Well, wait a second. I got a statement to make, too. I think her parents should get in their car and come and pick her up. I've talked them out of that. She has to make up her own mind to go home. Mike, I can handle this. Dr. Brothers, let me ask you this. Why are you getting so wrapped up in this situation? For the same reason that you're involved with Bobby. We're needed. That's why. Mike called. Where 
Jersey now? Seattle. Seattle's almost in Canada. He's never coming back. Hey, you really studied that map. I hate your dumb map. Hey, I miss him too. My mom, she's home waxing her legs, because when Red comes, she's taking me and him to this golf place. So who cares if Mike's in Seattle? Me. I care. This looks like a good spot, Mike. Stop the car. Stop the car. Come on back. Picturesque. Are you sure you have everything? Mike's jacket will keep you warm. I'd give you a hug, but I don't want to embarrass you in front of your peers. Mike, let's go. Don't look back. Hey, guys, do you think this is a good idea? Oh, of course it is. If I was 17 years of age, I'd have a gold ring in my belly button. I'd never go to sleep, and I'd stay away all night. Uh, could I borrow some money? Oh, you don't need money here. Uh, for a hotel. Oh. I thought the whole idea was that you were going to sleep under the bridge, right? But I might need some money for food. Oh, everybody shares everything here. What if it rains? It won't. It's Seattle. Let's go, Mike. But I hate it here. <laughs> Mine's better. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you crazy? Look at this. She just wanted a tattoo. What are you, crazy? You can't let some 14-year-old girl decide what you're gonna do. You can have one, too, if you want it. Smooth. It's very smooth. Oh, come on, Mike. I hate that sound. What sound? That's your Jack Kerouac on the road sound. Yep, I know. Just drive. And, and it doesn't get any better than this, right? Meaning? A perfect ending to our trip. Adios, Seattle. Hello, L.A. Okay. Mom, look it. Hmm? I made it for you. Ooh. Oh, pretty. <laughs> it's a good luck cake. When you eat it, your luck gets good. Oh, well. I better eat a lot of it then, huh? What's the matter? <clears throat> I'm just nervous. On account of Red's coming over tonight? What if he's sick of me? He won't be. How do you know? Because when you came home from him, you were still smiling. You are such a sweetie. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to be different, Mom. All you got to do is have a piece of my cake. Honest. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Ouch, very good. You know what? I have 
finish my nails. Okay. You know, uh, Canada is just around the corner. Uh-huh. It would be a shame to come all this distance and not... Catherine, I am driving you home. I always wanted to see a mountain. Believe me, I admire your pioneer spirit, you know, just traveling on just a little further, seeing what's around the next bend, just for the hell of it. But I know you, before this is over, we'll end up driving to Iceland or something. Have you finished? You gotta cut me loose, Catherine. Look, I could lie to you and tell you the company wouldn't go for it. The truth is, my boss is dancing on the rooftops. It's just... I've been away long enough. I shall have to see the Mounties without you. Carry yourself. Now this is traveling. There's no yakking, no frou-frou lunches, nobody yammering at me to slow down if I'm five miles over the speed limit. Yeah, I better check and see if she got a cab. What am I, a keeper? She's gotta be 70 something. She can take care of herself. Stop thinking, just drive. Cab, ma'am? Do you know your way around Canada? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. My aunt lives in Victoria. It, it's much too pristine. Ma'am? It lacks character. It won't work. but I'm working on it, Mr. Nasty. Mr. Nasty? Mm-hmm. Guess what? What? I got a B-plus on my geography test. Great, congratulations. I'm gonna save up for one of those globes of the world. You know the ones that spin around? Cool. What's old Mike say? That he loves, loves, loves you. You're getting all red. You're getting all snoopy. Come on, I'll be late. What? For work. Do we have to go to the dispatch office? Huh? I have to be home early. Okay. Mom's taking me and Red to this miniature golf place. Cool. She says Red's real good at sports, and he's got a big laugh. People with big laughs are real nice, right? Yeah, I guess, sometimes. Mom, gonna make sure I lose so they'll like me. Mom says the guys hate it when you beat them and stuff. Well, if he's Mr. Right, he'll think you're great no matter what. You are, you know. What? Great. I think you're spectacular. Hey, there's your mountain. Yoo-hoo! have arrived on scene. I got a California cab traveling northbound on Highway 12. It looks suspicious. I'm in pursuit. 
Copy that. Waiting on plate number. The taxi has California license plates. It could be a stolen vehicle. Copy that. Back up on the way. There's a woman in the front seat. We may have a hostage situation. We're staying one hour, you hear me? Then this cab goes home. With you or without you? We're having tea at the Crown Victoria. And that is something that cannot be rushed. Yeah, well, what you don't finish, you just stick it in that nifty little purse of yours. Send out the entire police force. I ask you, are you speeding? I'm going two miles under. Follow her immediately. Then why are they following us? I don't know. Why are you following us? Follow her immediately. You people are so noisy. Now stop that immediately. You've no right to accost my driver. You, get those handcuffs off. Aren't you listening to me? Do you realize who you're dealing with? No, ma'am. Mr. Donahue is a celebrity. Here is our ID. Take the handcuffs off. What? Take them off. Good. What is this? Doesn't look like a stolen vehicle to me. Ma'am, on behalf of... Apology accepted. Thank you. Now, could you please tell us where the Crown Victoria Hotel is? Yes, ma'am. It, it's in Vancouver. Would you like an escort? Oh. <laughs> Why not? That'd be great. Thank you. Dear Bobby, I guess all I've ever done is break my promises to you. Even the little ones, like taking you out with me in red tonight. I can't do it, Bobby. I can't let him know about you. You see, with red, I can start over. And without me, you can start over, too. I'm not coming back, even if this doesn't work out. Every time I run, I hurt you just a little more. I phone social services. They'll take good care of you. 
I know this is the best, the, the best thing I can do for you. Goodbye, my free bird. I'll send you kisses every night. Mr. Donahue, nice to have you with us. Tell Mr. Wallace the cab couple's here. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, thank you. I'll take it from here. Madame. Thanks. Oh, Hello, I'm Mr. Wallace, manager of the Crown Victoria. Welcome. Will you be staying with us? I'm afraid not. We just came for tea. But we insist. We'd be honored to have you as our guests. Have you had any lunch? Mike! Mike! What's wrong? Come on, it's starting. What's starting? Serious case of mistaken identity today when Canadian police stopped California cab driver Mike Donahue and his passenger, Captain Ewer. Police assumed the Pasadena cab was a stolen vehicle when, in fact, Mr. Donahue and Miss Ewer were simply tourists who took a 3,000 mile ride to visit our province. Are you crazy? Mike, for goodness sake, why didn't you tell me that my hat was on lopsided? Looks fine. You know, Mike, you're very photogenic. Thank you. But you should have turned your head just a little bit more towards the camera so we could have had the full impact of your eyes. Well, I was being manhandled at the time. It was kind of a little bit tough to turn my head on that angle, you know. The couple had been traveling for several days before they met our unorthodox hospitality committee. Ha! There's my girl. Hey, if that's room service, have them send up another batch of these hoity-toity cookies. What happened? They want to charge us for the room? <laughs> it's from the vice chancellor. Vice chancellor what? The vice chancellor of the province. He's invited us to dine with him. And to find out what the weather Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> How I admire your joie de vivre, simply to pick up and go. <laughs> to your travels, which I'm pleased to say brought you here to me, or rather to uh, my country. Mm. So, um, you just rattle around this big mansion all by yourself? I beg your pardon? I mean, you live alone, not counting all the help. Ah, yes, uh, sadly, I'm quite alone. Oh, a bachelor? Mike, really? Uh, a widower. Mm. For how long? Six years. The tapestry. <laughs> it's really quite magnificent. Yes, we found that in France, back in the 50s, uh, in Bordeaux. Mm. Hey, did, uh, did you and Grace ever backpack through France? You know, Princess Grace and Catherine modeled together in New York. Intriguing. Oh, cover girls. In those days, uh, we weren't supermodels. It was more... Um... Subdued. Exactly. <laughs> well, life seemed so tranquil. Oh, perhaps it's uh, as I wish to remember it. How long will you be at the Crown Victoria? Well, Catherine might be staying for a while. 
Well, then if I'm lucky, I will meet again. Thank you. Perhaps tomorrow. You've won our hearts. Hey. Uh oh. How'd it go? You know, first dates can be pretty rugged. Where's Lisa? What do you care? All you're doing is watching me so Mike likes you. Okay, wait a minute, Bobby. Where's your mother? What do you care? Don't go saying I'm spectacular, because I'm not. I'm not anything. Just get out and leave me alone. I'm sick of you and everybody. All I want is to be by myself. All right, Bobby, listen to me. When I dropped you off last night, you and Lisa went out with Red. What happened? Stop talking. Kill that stupid rat. What for? For making you feel bad, idiot. He didn't make me feel anything. I didn't even get to see who he was. <sighs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hang on. What's this? Nobody wants to stay with me. <laughs> I ran away forever this time. <sighs> hey, um, look. Sorry. What's wrong? I talked to Sandy. His Bobby is... Well, is he all right? His mom ditched him. Oh. Yeah. Pack. Well, I, I already did. I just I just want to come by and say goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah, well, I got to get back to L.A. Well, of course we do. I'll be ready in about 10 minutes. Oh, come on now. What about your vacation? I've already collected enough teapots. Thank you, Mike. Oh, that poor child. Well, hold on, Catherine. W what about the vice chancellor? What about him? Well, the guy's crazy about you. If I wasn't there last night, he probably would have popped the question. Well, I'm too old for romance. Since when? Listen to me, old people don't slap fake tattoos on themselves or uh, stop and listen to the sound of the sun hitting the sea. You've got a good thing going here. I mean, this is a guy who appreciates the frou-frou aspects of life. And I, I mean, I think you'd be the belle of Vancouver. Do you think I'd let you go all that distance without me? Like it or not, we're a team. I can't find the ticket. I have done you. Yeah. We do know which car is for okay. you. Good. Thank you. The vice chancellor sent these, and his car will arrive for you this morning at 10. Please give the vice chancellor my regrets. Catherine, it's and not too thank late. thank you for me. We have got to go home. Catherine. She will be back, I promise. I mean, I'll drive her myself, maybe tomorrow, next month. Just tell him she'll be back. Sweet home. What did you say? You said, here we are, we're home. Oh, I'm at 15% of oh. my bill. Oh, come on, Catherine, I don't want to tip. I always tip 15%. I'll get those. Oh, don't be silly. Come on, door-to-door -door service. I can do it myself. You run along, I'll manage. It's no trouble. I'll be taken care of. 
I know you got plenty of people to help you, but uh, at least let me drop them off on your doorstep. Okay. Oh, Pencil. Here she is. You got a pen. Thank you for everything. It's a pleasure. Amen. You know where to find me, right? I mean, if you ever need anything. At school, he had a geography but I thought project. I told you to be I sure got him to go. back, okay? If he is in there, sound asleep. Look, I feel bad enough as it is, so don't take it out on me. I'm not the one you're mad at, Mike. <sighs> Sorry. Look, I love Bobby too. I would do anything. I missed you. You know that? I, I missed you too. No, I mean. I mean, I really missed you. And I was thinking, you know, I mean, I talk to you every single day. And, uh, what do I take you out, what, five, six times a week? If I, if I, if I have a problem, I mean, you're, you're, the, you're the only person I want to talk to, so. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm nuts, but it uh, seems to me like we're getting pretty serious. Actually, it's just living in this palace by myself. I, I get lonely. I just want some company. You, uh, you hate my cooking. No, so we get the kid to coach. I mean, it's part of the deal. You know? Yeah, it's not gonna be that easy. You know, the social worker said we need to get a lawyer and character witnesses. It doesn't matter. We'll handle it. to see about handing this room over to you for good. I mean, I mean if it's okay with you. Forever. Like a father, kind of. Yeah. Absolutely like a father. Forever. Catherine Yor, please leave a message after the beep. Miss Yor, uh, Mike didn't want to bother you, but I was wondering if you would appear in court. I know this is short notice, but there's a preliminary hearing. I've read your petition for guardianship, and it seems to be in order. 
I see that the mother has signed a consent form and the Department of Human Services has completed a home study. Do you have any further evidence or character witnesses you would like to present at this time? Um. No, Your Honor. Your Honor, my name is Catherine Ewer. I have something I'd like to say in this matter. May I approach? Yes. Thank you. Your Honor, in my opinion, Mr. Donahue is an endangered species. He's a gentleman who understands caring, loyalty, and responsibility. If he commits to something, he will stay with it to the end, no matter how difficult. The fact that he is here today is proof of his enormous capacity to love. And what this child needs is a stable environment, a family he can depend on, and love. The kind of love that Mr. Donahue can offer. Bridge Club by... Well, then dinner Thursday. Yeah, for Thanksgiving. Thank you, but with the holidays, I'm so busy. Well, maybe some other time. Maybe. Turkey's done. Ta-da. Mmm, it's good. Isn't that beautiful? You know, we should get flowers. Oh, come on, the game's on. Flowers for Catherine. Oh, she's probably had a house full of flowers. Oh, that's not the point. She came through for you in court. Look, I think she just wants to get on with her life. She's probably got a million guests over at that mansion. Flowers. Flowers. Mm -hmm. I told you she's busy. Mike. your home? Well, I'm not sure. Have you checked your apartment? It's in the rear. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry to bother you. Come on. They're lovely. Thank you. Well, I guess you have holiday plans? I, um, I do. sent it to me. She'd like to come and visit. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll drive you to the local tattoo parlor, if you like. <laughs> huh. 
would be nice to see her again. But I'm sure pretty soon she'll forget all about us. Hey, nobody's forgetting about anybody. Catherine, I gotta tell you, I had you all wrong. Oh, you thought I was a spoiled lady of leisure. Ooh, something like that. I mean, what do you want with the doilies under the teacups and the sandwiches without the crust? I felt like I was hanging out with the queen. Oh, wow. Oh. High standards are nothing to be ashamed of. Flair. Hmm? That guy, the realtor, he was right. You're a lady with flair. We had a hell of a trip, didn't we? Adventure. Yeah, I'm keeping my postcards forever. It's too bad you didn't mail some yourself so you could have pictures of your vacation. Oh, I have something better. What? Memories. It took a cab ride to Canada to remind me that the most important things in life are friends. Got that right, Catherine. It's a wonderful holiday. Hey, why don't you come by and see us before your dinner? We've got a heck of a turkey. Yeah, it's humongous. Yeah, it's too big for us. And Bobby baked purse-sized rolls. Oh, Mike. And it wouldn't be any fun without you. I'll get my hat. <laughs> I think Bobby could use an etiquette lesson. What's etiquette? You are about to find out. Madame? Better hold on to your hat. Okay, buckle up. Where to, princess? Drive, Mike. Just drive. <laughs>